Um, I want to start by acknowledging what may be obvious to most people. I am not Jennifer Solomon, who is our parent and family support manager um, in what can only be described as a beautiful moment of kismet. Uh, Jennifer was unable to join us today because as of 1225 AM, she became a grandmother. So uh, yes, congratulations to Jennifer. And uh, I think it's perfect because the Parenting with Pride program, our focus as an organization is on putting families first. And so what better way to demonstrate that than to put Jennifer and her family first by allowing her to celebrate a beautiful new addition to her family. Uh, my name is Brandon Wolf. I am the press secretary for Equality Florida. And this is what Florida's families really look like. For years, parents and families just like the ones behind me have been under assault. Their freedoms have been under siege. Their rights have been under attack. Politicians have waged war on these families, turning their classrooms into political battlefields and descending school districts into utter chaos. And for years, families just like the ones behind me have borne the brunt of that chaos. But today marks a turning of the tide. Today marks a rise in the resistance against that agenda. Those families are mobilizing to say that they have had enough. Today, arm in arm with numerous incredible partners, we are launching the Parenting with Pride program. As the attacks on families have escalated, as books have been ripped from shelves, Class schedules have been upended. Support systems for students have been dismantled. Black history has been censored. Curriculum has been whitewashed and propagandized as schools have been made less safe and less welcoming for all students. The need for support has escalated dramatically. Already over a thousand families are a part of Parenting with Pride and we only just got started. And the number who've been asking us for support and information and resources is several times larger than that. There is a need for answers in Florida right now. Answers to what rights families have and can continue exercising in schools. Answers to how the raft of legislation that's targeting those families will be implemented in classrooms. Answers to how the system will impact their kids. Answers to how, how we support our young people at a time when their futures are being used as political pawns. Answers to how to organize, answers to how to mobilize, answers to how to fight for real freedom in the state of Florida. This is what Florida's families really look like. And they are done being sidelined by groups like Moms for Liberty, who masquerade as warriors for parents as they fight to strip the rights of parents across this state. They are done being used by, as pawns by politicians who don't care about them or their well being. They're only looking to score cheap political points. And Parenting with Pride is here to empower them, here to give them information and resources they've been looking for, here to create spaces for them to build coalition with one another. Parenting with Pride is here to connect them with the organizations that can help them and that are designed to serve them. And Parenting with Pride will amplify their demands that Florida finally be a place where every single student is protected and every single family is treated with the respect they deserve. And so I'd like for you to hear from some powerful parents in our community. Uh, we have a few of them lined up for you today. And I'd like to start with Tatiana Quiroga, who is a mom here in Central Florida and also the executive director of Come Out With Pride Orlando. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here today. Really echoing what Brandon was saying of truly how critical in our time right now this program is. My name is Tatiana Quiroga. My pronouns are she, ella, and I'm the executive director for Come Out With Pride. As Brandon shared, I was invited here today to speak not just as an LGBTQ plus leader here in Central Florida, but more importantly, as a parent. 
I parent every single day with pride. My wife and I started our journey in 2004. We got married in 2006 before marriage equality, shortly after we began our, our fertility journey to build our family. One thing about LGBTQ plus families is that we, there's no accidents. We have absolutely no privilege of having any whoops or accidents in building our families. We went through years of fertility treatment with, with IVF and, and all the doctor's bills and the, and the treatment and the medication and such. And after all that, we had our first son. As a non-bio, non-gestional carrier, I had to I actually adopt my son here in the state of Florida to have parental rights. Soon after that, we started for our second kiddo. We ended up having him after two years of a fertility journey. And again, even after marriage equality, I still had to go back and adopt my own son. Being part of an LGBTQ plus family comes with so many trials and tribulations, yet at the same time with so many joys and victories because we so intentionally create our families. So to know that we are in a time where the state of Florida is trying to erase us, telling us that these efforts are being done in the, in the name of parent rights, the true question has to be for which parents and whose rights. Because I, as a parent who are sending my children to school every single day in our public school system, have the equal amount of rights as any other parent in the same situation. And I need to make sure that my child, nor our family, nor myself are being erased in this system. Because we have the equal amount of rights. And so that is why this program through Equality Florida is absolutely so critical in this time to be able to support our families both LGBTQ plus parents and also those with allies with LGBTQ plus children. We are the future, our children are the future, and we are the next chapter of Florida. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tati. Uh, next, I wanna welcome Cassandra Brown, who is also a mother here in Central Florida and is the co-founder and executive director of All About the Ballots. Grand Rising, let me start with my remix of one of my favorite Nina Simone songs. Alabama's got me so upset. Texas made me lose my rest and everybody knows about Florida. God damn, <laughs> Florida, we are under attack. We must stand up and we must fight back. I, as a native Floridian and a black mom am deeply concerned about what Florida is becoming. I am confused as to why we are fighting against, for, uh, against bans on books and fighting for bans on guns so that our children are safe. Why do we have to demand that legislators embrace, not erase our black history, which by the way is American history? Why are we fighting for the expansion of Medicaid for poor families so that all of Florida's children are healthy? Why do we have to fight for caps on rent when we know this will make sure that all of our children have comfortable, safe homes to live in. Our state's focus should be less on deciding which books our children are allowed to read and more on protecting these vital freedoms and providing these essential services for all of our children. For me and a few others, this all seems like common sense, but we have come to understand that under the current the census led administration, common sense ain't common. I, as a black mother, do not have the luxury of hiding or protecting my children from the uncomfortable truths of our history. Those are the truths that protect them and keep them alive. These truths are seen in stories like Mick Stone's Dear Martin about a black high school student's letter to Martin Luther King Jr recalling his dangerous encounter with white police officers. And what about Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson, which is about real life missing black girls who fail to receive attention from the media or the police. Yet these are the types of books being banned. 
books serve as doors into an infinite number of goals to set, dreams to achieve, idols to discover, cultures to be immersed in, career paths to choose from, and beautiful Black inspirational leaders, old and young, that look like me, my children, and others in my community. They provide discussions on how to be an anti-racist by Ibram X. Kendi, and they provide tools for breaking barriers to equity and equality. On those pages are successful Black men, women, and children of every sexual orientation, gender conforming or non-conforming. They share similar experiences and values that tell stories of overcoming racist, homophobic, violent, and even sometimes deadly encounters. Our children deserve to know the truth, no matter how embarrassing or painful. They deserve to see themselves successful, healed, and thriving through the lives of their idols and ancestors found in books. Because the trauma of slavery is still very much present and attached to our DNA, the governor's recent attacks on Black Floridians feels way too familiar and beyond triggering. Florida, we are in the fight of our lives. Now, standing here in solidarity with my LGBTQIA community members, we must realize that their issues do not exist only outside of Black and Brown communities. For far too long, we have allowed judgment to inflict harm by excluding our own LGBTQIA children. As Leon Russell, chair of the National Board of Directors of NAACP stated, you cannot profess to be a civil rights fighter and then insert exceptions. It's none of your business who I love, you just have to let me have the right to do that. So let's be clear. The opposite of diversity and inclusion is discrimination and exclusion. There are no gray areas. To close, I'll summarize one of my favorite quotes. They came for the socialists, the trade unionists, and the Jews. I did not speak up because I was neither of those. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak up for me. Martin Neamoller. Florida, we are under attack, and we must stand up, stand together, and fight back. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, powerful words and a reminder of the intersectionality of our struggle. Uh, next, I'd like to welcome another mom here in Central Florida, Jen Cousins, who is also the co-founder of the Florida Freedom to Read Project. Good morning. My name is Jen Cousins, and last year I co-founded the Florida Freedom to Read Project in response to the banning of the award-winning book Gender Queer. But more importantly, I'm a mom of four kids in this district, two of whom are part of the LGBTQ plus community. Florida's public education system has been under heavy attack by the extreme right for two years now. As we've watched anti-government groups like Moms for Liberty rise to prominence with seemingly endless funds and direct lines to our state's far right legislatures, their influence has caused Florida to pass some truly heinous laws. Starting with last year's Don't Say LGBTQ law, which I'm a lead plaintiff in a lawsuit against. <laughs> The so-called free estate in America started banning books about queer families, including the much-loved board book about penguins called Entango Makes Three. This year, the legislature passed an expansion of this law that expands to eighth grade and also stipulates that teachers and school staff do not need to respect student or staff pronouns, that you may not teach that there are more than two genders, and that under no circumstances can a woman become a man or vice versa. To add fuel to this fire, the state BOE adopted their own role last month that expands us to 12th grade. My eighth grader is non-binary and incredibly proud. They've been watching the new series of Good Omens on repeat and have been so delighted that the character Crowley is gender fluid just like them. Representation matters. So imagine how hard it is to be almost 14, comfortable in who you are, but the state you live in is passing laws saying that your existence is not real. How do you think it feels to carry that weight on top of what it's already like to be a teenager. Representation matters, and we must stop removing representation in our schools through the banning of books, history, and curriculum. 
I've been fighting overtime to protect LGBTQ youth in Florida since Moms for Liberty first came up attacking them in 2021. And because of bad laws passed by their right wing supermajority, this work only gets harder and harder. But I will not back down. My queer kids are lucky to live in such a loving and affirming home. Sadly, we know that most LGBTQ plus kids don't have that support. So I'm committed to do all I can to help them and to help keep them safe because it's crucial for them to know that there are adults who value them for who they are. I'm beyond thrilled that Equality Florida is launching Parenting with Pride. I feel this is an urgent need to fight back against bigoted rhetoric. And I look forward to helping in any and all capacity that I can to help grow this program. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jen. Uh, next, I want to welcome up Andrea Montanez, who is also a parent here in Central Florida uh, and serves as Hope Community Center's LGBTQ Immigration Coordinator. Hello, buenos dias. My name is Andrea Montanez. I use the pronoun she, her, ella. I'm a proud transgender woman. I also proud immigrant from Colombia. I'm Latinx and I'm human, I all of you, and I'm also a parent. Mi nombre es Andrea Montanez, soy una orgullosa mujer transgénero inmigrante de Colombia, Latinx y también soy humana como todos ustedes. I feel so thank you, thankful and blessed to be here talking about the future of our families. Es importante proteger nuestras familias y que todos sepan que no están solos. We all the hate legislation that all you know how the fascist Florida attack the more beautiful and magical communities like the transgender community, like the brown and black color, like the immigrant community. All of us are under attack, under attack. All our families are under attack, but we have to be together. And it's good to have here the family show. We are here and we don't go nowhere. Tenemos que proteger nuestras familias y nuestros hijos que pertenecen a las comunidades más mágicas, como las comunidades de color, la comunidad transgénero, la comunidad migrante. We have to keep ensuring that our trans kids has access to basic human rights, because we're fighting for basic human rights, like had a barroom and spaces where they can feel safe. Tenemos que buscar y garantizar el derecho a acceder a derechos básicos como el baño y lugares donde nuestros hijos sean aceptados y respetados por lo especial que son. And not only the students, also we have to support our transgender and non-binary teachers. They are important part of our families. No podemos olvidar nuestros profesores y empleados de las escuelas que son transgénero. We have to ensure the consistent use of your child's pronouns and affirm names at the school. Tenemos que asegurar que los pronombres y el nombre que afirma la identidad sea utilizado sin ninguna excepción en las escuelas. Tenemos, we have to ensure our child has access to a discriminatory and no discriminatory and affirming space at the school. We cannot let the hate and the bullies attacking our children. Our children. It's not only the kids. We have big. Oops. Sorry. We had a lot of bullies like Moms on Liberty. That's a big group of bullies, and they don't understand what's coming on here. We don't want to have our kids to come in, uh, the six kids to come in trans. We only want to ensure that our trans kin come in adults, be alive. No queremos convertir los niños cis en trans. Solo queremos que nuestros niños trans lleguen a ser adultos y felices y vivos. I have to talk a little about also other part of the school's attack is the immigration. The immigration kids, undocumented, they deserve education too. They come in here. I came to this country 24 years ago looking for freedom and I found it. And I'm gonna keep fight for that freedom because that's what they learn when you are coming as a US citizen. Fight for your rights. Los inmigrantes no son el problema. Los inmigrantes son parte de la solución. At this moment, all of us are under attack. Human is under attack. Trans kids are under attack. Kids of color are under attack. Brown kids are under attack. Immigrants are under attack. So, we have to come in together and pressure the government, pressure the schools, pressure also the federal government to don't forget us because we need to pass equality act and bring all the civil rights back to us and stop with the Florida markets. And so that's important when we have the groups and thank equality Florida to get peace and get all the families together, families of immigrants, families of us the LGBT community, families of color, families brown and black. That's the real Florida. 
we come here to be together. So I want to finish what I thought I used for that. But it's only, we don't need your permission to assist. No necesitamos el permiso para asistir de nadie. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andrea. We're gonna get some assistance with the podium. Uh, next, I'd like to welcome another Central Florida mom, Heather Wilkie, who also serves as the executive director of Zebra Youth. Thank you, Brandon. Hello, my name is Heather Wilkie. I use she, her pronouns. I am here today representing several roles. I'm a licensed mental health counselor, the executive director of an LGBTQ plus youth organization called Zebra Youth, and my most important role, a mom to an eight-year-old third grade student. As a parent, my son has two mothers, and since he was born, all of his educational opportunities have been intentionally placed in affirming environments. As he has grown out of reading materials, I've always donated his books to his schools, many of which have been recently seen on the banned books list across the country, including Entango Makes Three and I Am Jazz, both books that help my son's classmates understand his family. As a volunteer classroom reader, I have seen an incredible range of diverse materials that many of our teachers are denied today. My partner is a non-binary high school educator who has spent the past seven years teaching AP psychology, a course that due to the don't say gay or trans bill has been under attack, causing so much confusion that many districts across the state ban students access to the course. In addition to the books and subjects that can or cannot be taught, trans and non-binary students and teachers are under attack in many other ways. Banned from playing sports, having access to restrooms, usage of names and pronouns, and what is possibly the most damaging of all, misinformation and fear. As the executive director of Zebra Youth for the past eight years and as a therapist, I've seen hundreds of young people reach out to us because they are not supported at home, searching for a safe place where they can be their authentic selves. I've witnessed an alarming rate of youth who are kicked out of their homes by their parents who are not supportive of their children due to their sexual orientation and gender identity. We know statistically that LGBTQ plus youth experience higher rates of depression and suicidal ideation, but it is more important to point out that LGBTQ youth are not inherently prone to mental health challenges due to their sexual orientation and gender identity, but rather are placed at a higher risk because of how they are stigmatized and mistreated in society. Research shows that these youth who find homes and school environments to be LGBTQ affirming report much lower rates of suicidal attempts. When we know better, we do better. And our students deserve to have the opportunity to live up to their full potential and for their classmates to be safe environments, their classrooms to be safe environments that foster their full potential and educational growth. My son deserves to be able to share his family life with his peers and his teachers should be able to support him without fear of losing their jobs. Each of us here today have the power of our stories and our voices, and our parental rights matter too. So I wanna thank Equality Florida for starting this phenomenal program and ask that you all join us in our efforts to fight against these hateful attacks that are happening against our state. Thank you. Thank you so much, Heather. And finally, I'd like to welcome Another Central Florida mom uh, and Seminole County PTA president, Shelly Pedraza. Good morning. My name is Shelly Pedraza and I am currently president of Seminole County Council PTA. PTA is the oldest and largest child advocacy association in America. For 125 years, PTA has worked with school communities and decision makers to solve the toughest problems in our nation's history. We have established programs and called for legislation that improves our children's lives, such as creating kindergarten classes, child labor laws, public health service, hot and healthy lunch programs, juvenile justice system, arts and education, elementary recess, and school safety. Our mission is to make every child's potential a reality by engaging and empowering families and communities to advocate for all children. These past two years in Florida, the need to advocate for our children has increased. The Florida legislature has passed laws that restrict K-12 instruction and K-12 students' access to materials on concepts pertaining to race, color, national origin, gender identity, and sexual orientation. 
We have had teachers get rid of classroom libraries due to book bans, students not feeling comfortable in schools, and history content being adjusted. We have so many communities that have been impacted by recent events, and at the end of the day, the children suffer the most. While I was in elementary school, I remember learning about the new world. I love the excitement of it, and I went home ready to tell my parents everything I learned. Now, I am Puerto Rican. Both of my parents are from Puerto Rico. And my dad is very proud of who we are. I went home and I told them everything I had learned and they sat me down and proceeded to tell me what really happened. What happened to the Indians, our history in Puerto Rico. And my dad handed me a really old history book. I read it all. And as I was reading, I remember asking why. Why not just tell the whole story? Why not just tell the truth? Recently, I saw another history book excerpt about the same subject, and it said the Native Americans were so excited to have the colonists where they colonists there, they decided to give them their land. Could this have happened somewhere? Maybe. But is, is this the whole truth? Not even close. Our children deserve the truth. And the censorship that is currently being pushed into our schools is not going to help our children. Our children grow up around a diverse group of people. Look around. We are all different and that is something that should be celebrated. We shouldn't have to change history, our family dynamics, how we dress, or who we are to be accepted. One of our Florida students recently said, this is life or death, and it is. When I was asked about speaking today, I was struggling with the approach. Should I talk about my autistic son and the struggles he faces? My wonderfully diverse family and friends, my many LGBTQ family members and friends who I cannot imagine my world without, my fear of what not being honest about our history will do to this next generation, or the lack of kindness that is so heartbreaking to watch. My biggest question to all of you watching from home is this, when is it enough? What will it take for all of us to get together and change what is happening? If you wanna help but aren't sure what to do, join a PTA or one of the other organizations that are here. You can join PTA and not have to volunteer if you aren't ready for that. Joining helps increase our numbers so we can try to push for legislation that will help our children feel safe. Write to your legislators, vote, write to your our children need to go to school happy and ready to learn, not feeling like this is life or death. In PTA, we, we use the saying, every child, one voice. Cada niño, una voz. We all need to get together to support all of our children. Parenting with pride is about all of us joining together. I am proud of my autistic son and the man he is becoming. I am proud of my Puerto Rican heritage, which includes Taino, Indian, and African. I am proud of my family and friends, which include lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, and queer people. And I am proud of the work that I do and those that have agreed to work alongside me. Thank you. Thank you so much. I just want to thank one more time the incredibly powerful parents who've come up here and shared their stories, who've talked about what it feels like to be a family in Florida, for stepping up and being heard. I want to thank all of you for showing up today to send a message that this is your Florida too. You're sending a message that your children deserve the same safety and respect and opportunity to thrive as everyone else's children. So I wanna offer an invitation to those who may be watching from home. Maybe your kid is just starting their coming out journey and you're looking for ways to support them. You're looking for other people who've been in that process. Join us. Parenting with pride is for you. Maybe you're planning that conversation with your kid's principal to figure out how they're going to be respected in school, which bathroom they're going to have to use. And you need someone to sit with you and figure out the right words to convey your message and your heart. Join us because parenting with pride is a resource for you. Maybe you're ready to step up to a microphone, to show up to a school board meeting, to push back and say enough is enough. No more attacks, no more using our classrooms as political battlefields, no more using our kids as pawns. Maybe you're ready to take that next step in your advocacy journey. And I say join us as well, because parenting with pride is a program 
for you. Parenting with pride is about so many things, but at its core, it's about demanding a Florida that is better. It's about demanding a Florida that is safer, that is more welcoming, that is more open, that is more equal, that is more free. Demanding a Florida where every single student is protected and every single family is respected. So thank you again for being here. I'll take a few questions if you have them before we wrap up. No, the 1,000 families that are represented in the program already span from Pensacola to Key West. Uh, we've held a number of uh, informational town halls and virtual briefings to help them understand the implications of legislation that's already passed in Tallahassee. People have questions about bathrooms, they have questions about pronouns and books and curriculum and AP courses, and we've been able to get them in touch with experts to help walk them through the implications of those laws. And again, that thousand families and the more who've asked for support and resources moving forward span all the way from Pensacola to Key West. Can you talk a bit about the parenting Yeah, if you go to parentingwithprideflorida.org, you'll see the list of organizations that are partnered with us. And what you'll notice is that a good number of them have mental health resources available for families as well as students. You've got people on there like GLSEN and the Trevor Project. You've got the Human Rights Campaign and GLAD. I know I'm going to forget some, uh, but they have mental health resources available. And a big part of Parenting with Pride is about connecting families to those resources, about getting them in the door. There's a button right when you go on the website, parentingwithprideflorida.org, that says get help. It has a little holding hand symbol. You click that, you immediately get in contact with our team. You let us know what's going on and we'll get you in touch with the right resources. If mental health resources are what you need in this moment, Parenting with Pride is a program for you as well. Anybody else? Okay, thank you so much for being here. I think uh, I can be around if you have additional questions uh, and we'll thank you to everybody on the Zoom. We'll be downloading this and making it available uh, if reporters on the Zoom are looking for an opportunity to grab that video footage. Thanks everybody.